Testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. Good morning, welcome to the premium public video forecast discussion for Friday, July 14th, 2023. We have a lot to talk about, so let's dive right into it. First of all, we have a new subtropical storm in the Atlantic, subtropical storm Don. This feature has been festering about for the past couple of days in the central Atlantic and will continue to fester about over the central Atlantic over the next seven to ten days. There's, there's no threat to the United States. It's called a subtropical storm because at the lower levels you have a warm core low, which is now organized around this area of convection, but the rest of the storm structure is what we call an, an extratropical storm, a cold core storm. So basically it's within this trough. So as this feature basically meanders about over the northern Atlantic, it will continue to support the threat for large waves in the central Atlantic, but it is no threat whatsoever to the United States. It may be a threat to Azores later on next week, but that could be as an extra tropical storm by that point. So really it's no immediate threat for anyone out there unless you're in the shipping lanes and you can see on the latest model guys it just kind of spins about out there in the northern atlantic until it eventually lifts up towards the northeastern atlantic as a weakening low pressure system and by that point it looks like it will pretty much be an extra tropical low pressure system the rest of the tropics are very quiet no sign of any other type of development out there meanwhile a lot of people are asking me hey when is this pattern going to end because i'm kind of sick of the thunderstorms and unfortunately it's really not going to be ending anytime soon. A lot of this is driven by what we call the convection here in the Central Pacific. Now remember, what happens in the Pacific, what happens around the world, will impact your location. Okay, Maybe not directly, you might get, not get a direct impact, but indirectly it certainly does. And what this is doing is enhancing the polar and subtropical jet stream. So you're seeing all this convection taking hold. It's starting to influence this upper level low here. And it has been all spring, now all summer. And so that's why we continue to get this trough. Typical El Nino pattern. Throw in what we call the QBO. This is the stratospheric winds over the equator. And when they go into a negative state, they increase the potential for high latitude blocking. And that is essentially what we're heading towards. We went from a positive state in the early spring to now a negative state. And that trend to a negative state is supporting the high latitude blocking and the upper level lows that we are seeing. And likely we'll continue to see as we move on through the summer and into the cold season of fall and winter. Yes, I know you're thinking about negative NAOs and stuff like that, you weather, winter weather lovers out there, well, let's let's wait. We have more data we have to collect here, but certainly we are moving in that direction. So what does that mean? Well, the 500 millibar pattern here, which we can see right down here, uh, continues to feature these upper level lows. And this upper level low and trough continues to remain generally to the east of the region. Now, there is some indication, some hope that some polar air could build into the region and knock our temperatures back down to maybe to the lower to mid 80s, get a little bit more drier air, and maybe a slight break in the thunderstorm threat. Not ready to go there just yet, but there are some indications we might be heading in that direction. But unfortunately, as far as the 500 millibar pattern driving this whole scenario, it really doesn't change that much over the next 10 days and really on to the next 15 days. And yeah, I got some more bad news here. We can go all the way through August as well. Same scenario. Now, when you're looking at this type of model guidance, this is the uh, European guidance out to about 46 days. You never take anything verbatim, but you kind of get the general idea here with trough around the Gulf of Alaska and the Aleutians ridge over the Rockies, ridge over the West Atlantic, and this trough axis here over the eastern United States. Well, it keeps us basically in a very active weather pattern, that is for sure. And unfortunately, there's also going to be that threat if we get anything tro tropical developing around the Bahamas to possibly create some issues for the East Coast. So again, we're going to have to keep an eye on that to see where the trough axis sets up and 
and how that all plays out. So certainly a very active pattern. But again, I do have a little bit of good news here. We have the potential here, and we'll see whether or not this pans out beyond five days, of a more of a polar air mass building into the region, knocking our temperatures down, maybe get a little bit more dry air in here. So there is some signs of hope, maybe for not this weekend, but next weekend, of knocking our temperatures back down to the lower to mid 80s and maybe some lower humidity. Don't hold me that to that yet. We'll see where the trough actually sets up and whether or not we can get that cooler area in place. Right now, though, oh, it is tropical out there. We have showers and thunderstorms. We've had severe thunderstorm warnings already just around Trenton and lifting northward into northern New Jersey and towards the New York City metro. Temperatures this morning range from the upper 60s to lower 70s over the northern interior. Mid-70s around the New York City metro, upper 70s to lower 80s in the Philadelphia metro. And this is all driven by this setup here that we see at the surface from our weather tap radar and surface map here. Now this is our cold front that has stalled out and that's going to support waves of low pressure here. You see this trough right here? This trough was born out of the thunderstorms from last night. It's what we call rain cold air. I'll, I'll show you some of the observations associated with that. That supported the development of severe thunderstorms that are lifting to the northeast into northern New Jersey and heading into the New York City metro. Some of those thunderstorms are capable of producing some very heavy downpours. And as you have seen on social media, some vivid lightning. That is typical of an environment where you have a lot of moisture in the atmosphere for a high percentage precipital water uh, values in place because with all the water vapor in the atmosphere it creates more friction more electrical charge and there goes your lightning so we already see the setup this isn't going to be moving all that much today and you can see the vertical wind shear that allows our thermal slips to turn is pretty strong here up to 45 knots around the long island sound supporting that wave of thunderstorms but there's more to consider here First of all, our precipital water values are very impressive, uh, ranging from 1.5 to 2 inches from about the Delaware River and Delaware River Valley to the coastal plain and coastal waters. That is a lot of moisture, and it's only going to increase today. So basically, our range would be from 1.5 over northeastern Pennsylvania to 2.2 along the coast by this afternoon. And so what that supports are thunderstorms capable of vivid, frequent lightning, Torrential downpours, wind gusts over 55 miles per hour, downburst wind gusts via that, that process. And also, there is that threat because of the vertical wind shear that it show, showed of an isolated tornado or two. Now, this morning, let me pull this up here. This is our instability. Now, remember that trough here? Now, that trough here, this is all rain cooled air. This is an unstable environment. We call it conditionally unstable. We have a capping mechanism over the atmosphere because it's morning and temperatures at the surface are cool, but the mid-levels are unstable. So if you get enough lifting, like that trough, you can get a severe thunderstorm to break out. And that's essentially what we've seen over central New Jersey, but as it's lifting northward, it is becoming elevated. And so you end up with more of a heavy rainfall threat for northern New Jersey and Connecticut and the New York City metro. But as you can see in the mid-levels, right here, we have plenty of instability in place. We're already pushing over six inches, uh, six degrees Celsius in terms of the uh, temperature difference in the uh, mid-levels of the atmosphere. This supports an unstable environment. And so when the sun rises, which it's starting to, and the atmosphere heats up, the whole atmosphere will become unstable and support a pretty impressive cape. On the water vapor satellite picture, meanwhile, you can see the lifting mechanisms all marching their way towards our region. We have a nice broad trough associated with this upper level low here, controlling this whole pinwheel action. So one short wave after the other short wave drops in as this upper level low drops south towards the Great Lakes and keeps on sending these short waves towards our neck of the woods. Meanwhile, our subtropical jet stream, remember that? Well, that is also feeding in short waves as well that are marching through the southern plains and heading towards our area as well. So, parade of short waves lead to parades of showers and thunderstorms. You might not in your location get a thunderstorm every day, but if you get hit with one of these thunderstorms, they will be pretty impressive, as we have seen already this morning. 
So on the infrared satellite picture, you can see the cold cloud tops here associated with our thunderstorms. This is an impressive thunderstorm complex. No worries for us, but it shows you the power and the energy in the atmosphere already uh, throughout the eastern two-thirds of the United States of this very active pattern. So when we take a look at the model guidance here, we'll focus on the next 90 hours. And again, just short wave after short waves rotating through at 500 millibars, keeping our pattern active. And as far as the wind shear is concerned, today is an enhanced day with our uh, jet stream at 850 millibars. Tomorrow, not as bad. So I'm looking at more of an isolated severe threat with scattered showers, maybe a few heavy downpours. Then Sunday, we see another invigorated uh, 850 millibar jet stream, which again increases the potential for severe thunderstorms over the region. And then on Monday, we kind of back off, but still that threat for scattered showers and thunderstorms, but possibly not as severe. And you, as you can see, the precipital water values remain elevated. And I'm really keeping an eye on Sunday to see how this plays out. Anytime you have a forecast of precipital water values over 2.5 inches, that is a huge warning sign for some very impressive heavy rainfall rates. So we'll be keeping an eye on that through the weekend. And you can see, again, we pretty much range from 1 to 2 inches in precipital water values. And at times it's spiking up to 2.5 inches, which, again, is a warning sign for us. And again, for today, the Cape values spike again in the afternoon, subside in the morning. Tomorrow they won't be as high, so I don't expect as many severe thunderstorms. Then on Sunday, we see that enhancement once again, and then on Monday as well. So again, Cape values mean it's the amount of energy in the atmosphere, the instability in the atmosphere. It's certainly in play here. So for the next 18 hours, we get a little bit of a break in the late morning and early afternoon hours as our thunderstorm lift from this morning lift to the northeast. Then we see another redevelopment later on this afternoon into the evening hours where some of these thunderstorms could be severe. And we see that theme continuing through the weekend. Again, tomorrow, not as widespread, more of a shower threat with heavy downpours. Sunday, we see that thunderstorm threat returning. Monday, again, is more of that widely skied shower and isolated thunderstorm threat. So when we walk through our forecast here for today, Watch out for scattered showers and thunderstorms. Temperatures will range from the lower to mid-80s over the northern interior, lower to mid-80s along the coast, and upper 80s to lower 90s in the Delaware River Valley. For tonight into tomorrow morning, again, watch out for some areas of fog, some isolated showers, low temperatures in the mid to upper 60s over the northern interior, and lower to mid-70s along the coast. Tomorrow afternoon, scattered showers are expected, a few isolated thunderstorms as well with temperatures rebounding into the mid to upper 80s over the northern interior, lower to mid 80s along the coast, and upper 80s to lower 90s in the Delaware River Valley. On Sunday, again, widespread showers and thunderstorms, heavy downpours, flash flooding is a concern here, along with powerful wind gusts leading to power outages, some wind damage, so something that we really have to keep an eye on. Look for temperatures to range from the upper 60s to lower 70s for lows, and lower to mid 80s over the northern interior, upper 70s to lower 80s along the coast, and mid 80s in the Delaware River Valley. On Monday, sky cloud cover with isolated showers and thunderstorms are expected. Look for low temperatures to range from the mid to upper 60s over the northern interior, lower to mid 70s along the coast. High temperatures will range from the mid 80s over the interior lower to mid 80s along the coast and upper 80s to lower 90s in the Delaware River Valley. And through the rest of next week, again, rinse and repeat, cold fronts and troughs hanging around the region, leading to a threat for sky showers and thunderstorms each day. Some days are going to feature more severe thunderstorms than others, depending on the orientation development of the instability in the atmosphere, vertical wind shear, but each day is going to feature fog in the morning, some patchy fog, some low clouds, and then scattered showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon with these cold fronts moving through but not really creating much of an air mass change. So as a result, our low temperatures through this time period will range from the mid to upper 60s over the northern interior, upper 60s to mid 70s along the coast, and high temperatures will range from the lower to mid 80s over the northern interior, lower to mid 80s along the coast, 
in upper 80s to lower 90s in the Delaware River Valley. That is your forecast discussion for today. Have a wonderful day, and as always, stay safe out there.